Because you're know, yeah. Don't know if you're in hell or you're in heaven and you just Did you actually, just make sense? Lie. That's a big lie. We can't make that joke. Abaya Samaj me. That was even more boring than what I've been casting all the wrong people in Student of the Year. Actually, you were in love with me because my testosterone was 11 and I thought I was a man. Uh, I didn't have a penis, but I've always had the balls and you were in love with me. Can we go back to that bit? Kiara is traumatized. This is very controversial. I can't read this. Based Rocky Rani apparently on my marriage. That's what everyone is saying. How much can you leech off me, man? Which is why you love, you know, Shanaya and Anaya and Kiara and Alia, which is great. She's Ananya. Okay, Ananya also. Rakhi Savant has a small cameo as well. Call people on your show, then you trap them, then they say silly things and they get into trouble. Siddharth Malhotra, Vicky Kaushal, Shah Rukh Khan. Ranveer Singh, these are your favorite questions. All of us are narcissistic. I'm the hottest person. I agree now. with you. <laughs> but it's okay. Some sacrifices are worth it. Shabana ji, you, you understand. Yes, yes. <laughs> So oh. there's a reason why you are at every book launch. You're my lucky mascot. I've almost now become superstitious about it. And I was telling my mom that it's like Ganpati. Every book launch, I put you on this dice, and then I do your research on the next day. <laughs> and uh, I think when Vidya and I were sitting backstage, I also said that if you pop it, I'm going to have your picture at my you know 12th or 15th book launch. Because that's well, the amount just... of faith I have in you. Just make sure you're wearing the right clothes when that happens because you will be judged. Oh my gosh. And make sure it doesn't look like the D-decor fabric air couch. I've just done some endorsements, Simone. Simone for you. is here and she's taking yes. grave offense at this no, D-decor fabric. I'm actually I'm actually promoting it. I've even done it on my show. Uh, but listen, it's such a it's an absolute pleasure and honor uh, to interview you uh, because you know. Yeah, I mean, I have to say these things. It's your launch. I have to be nice to you. Um, and uh, conversations with you are like welcome to paradise anyway. Uh, you don't know if you're in hell or you're in heaven, and you just. That's pretty much sounds like most people's marriages. <laughs> that, that's uh, also true. But, but but welcome to paradise is now touted to be a juggernaut success. Uh, it is so different from everything you've done. We'll get to that later. But first things first, something I'm genuinely curious about. You went back to school. What prompted you? What made this happen? What was the experience like? Um, I think I partly went back to university because I was approaching 50. And um, I've always said this, that age is definitely a mathematical problem. But it is not a sum of division where you're reduced to what, you know, a fraction of what you were. It's, it could be a multiplication sum if you grow. Now, I, at this, I, I have no understanding of what you just said. <laughs> Math was not my strong suit, but like, did Actually, you just make sense? Lie. That's a big lie because you told me that I, you were a school topper. It's just that you don't look like any sort of topper. You look like a bottom, but no, sorry. We can't make that joke. You just made it. I didn't make it. I okay. stopped. <laughs> Go back to the sum of some parts that you were talking about. I don't know what it meant, but anyway. It meant that you have to keep growing. And at this age, as you're very well aware, the easiest way is to grow horizontally. Yeah. So I'm trying to grow in different ways and not just horizontally. All right. Now, do you understand? Absolutely. Okay. So this meant that you wanted to kind of expand your repertoire of knowledge, information, and spread all of that after you're done. That was even more boring than what I was originally saying. Okay. But okay, let's go on. Yes, sir. <laughs> but the thing is, what you're not telling us, and what I will share with everyone here, is that you beat the ass out of everyone there. <laughs> like, you did so fantastic. You were distinction, superior distinction, whatever they call it. You were the topper. You were the school topper there. Exceptional distinction is what Exceptional <laughs> distinction. Yes, that also happened. But do you feel it enriched you as an author? No, but I definitely think that you've been casting all the wrong people in Student of the Year. You should have cast me. I'm the Student of the Year. And you just keep taking all these random people and making them. You fit the tag. You are also from the school of nepotism. I could of course. Very happily, you, you actually tick so many boxes. Uh, and let's not go back to the time when I did try and cast you and was rejected very uh, heartbreakingly. But anyway... You paved Can the way. Can we go back to the time when actually you were in love with me because my testosterone was 11 and I thought I was a man. Uh, I didn't have a penis, but I've always had the balls and you were in love with me. Can we go back to that bit? I can see Shabana ji dwindling in her seat. 
into into like shock, despair, and horror. And not just that, next to her is a very worried Vidya and an absolutely traumatized Kiara. No, Kiara is traumatized. Yes. I had to change the passage for her this morning because yes. she said, because this is very read... controversial, I can't read this. But, so... but Kiara's controversial meter is really quite low. I want to many things shock and surprise her. Uh, the book, uh, the four chapters and one novella. I have to say this, um, this is exceptional writing. And I'm not just saying it because I'm a friend. It's exceptional writing. You are it's saying so it because you're my friend. Yeah, but, but Also because you based Rocky yeah. Rani apparently on my marriage. That's what everyone is saying. I don't know. Is that true? No. How much it can you was, leech off me, man? Yeah. Well, it was just, it was an unconvent. It was two people coming together who come from different schools of thought. That doesn't mean it's your marriage, Tina. And everything is not about you. It was in the press. Well, that's You okay. gave an interview. I didn't I, say these things. Don't go by what I say. Uh, uh, so here was I'm talking about. The, there is, of course, you've touched upon so many themes. Thematically, it is dark, of course. It's heartbreaking, very heartbreaking. It deals with death in a way that I haven't really seen. Yet there is so much humor and dark humor laced right through it. I also feel like it's uh, very internal because you've gone very deeply internal, you've gone back to your childhood. There's a lot of references uh, or rather inspiration from your nani, uh, her Islamic side um, and um, uh, Ismaili side, sorry. And uh, there's also a lot of um, very, very, very wonderfully and deliciously written eccentric women. Uh, you know, all of them of a certain age, all of them eccentric. Breaking every myth, stereotype of uh, we of what we read of of women of a certain age, all of this in four short stories and one novella. I mean, it's no mean achievement. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. That's very kind. Thank you. So we'll go back to the fact that this big um, diversion, this creative diversion that you took from your last book, um, you know, about fitting into that the, about the comfortable pajamas. Uh, this is a totally different leap that you've taken. And was that also a conscious decision or is it just part of the evolution of an author? No, if I'm honest, I think in my last book, I made a lot of compromises. I, uh, I was under a lot of pressure, internal pressure, external pressure. You're Mrs. Funny Bones, there has to be a joke on every page. My protagonists were originally 60. I had to make them, you know, like 30. So I felt that I had, you know, done a disservice to myself. And then in this book, I was very clear that there are jokes, but only if they service the story. And there are all these amazing women. Um, and I'm, I'm fascinated by older women. It's, um, there's a certain richness and a texture in their stories that younger people, well, most younger people may not have. But the way that the world looks at them, it's like the minute you start putting on a hearing aid, everybody else around you becomes deaf because that's the way it is. Nobody really wants to hear older people. And I know that you're a big advocate of youth. You, we have discussed this, that how do you stay relevant? No, really, don't, don't, don't make that face. I'm not saying anything bad. You said it was by immersing yourself you know, amongst young people, which is why you love you know, Shanaya and Anaya and Kiara and Alia, which is great. She's Ananya. OK, Ananya also. You know Anaya's also. But I think that. <laughs> But I think that every phase is, is I interesting. I don't know why I come here after here. <laughs> no, I but it's a why, good thing. I don't know why no, one I second. <laughs> we had a very long conversation. We were talking about some directors which we can't name. And you, he said that, you know, those are obsolete. They are fossils and all these awful things about them. And then, <laughs> and then he said, you know, you have to be relevant. And that's why I hang around with young people. And I said, yeah, I just don't like people. So I can't hang around with young people. So I'll go and study. But... That was, because we are fossils now, we are 50. The world that we grew up in doesn't exist. So how do we stay fresh and reinvent ourselves? You've chosen, you know, the fountain of youth. And like a vampire, you suck all the blood of these young people. And I've tried a more sedate approach. <laughs> so basically what we've deduced from this <laughs> is that in conversation is a wannabe young mind 
and I'm talking to a prolific evolved mind. Basically, <laughs> that is what our deduction is from this particular answer. And I'm very grateful that uh, I've been invited to kind of ask you questions. <laughs> and I'll go back with an exceptionally low self-esteem tonight. But that's fine. I've combated trolls. You're nothing. I'm nothing. Yeah. And I love you. And this is all coming from how much I love you. But before we... I love we... everything about you. I love this Gucci suit. And you love the sound of your own voice. No, One second. No, but I love you. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, I want to kind of special mention to Jaguda. I hope he's in the room here. He's Jaguda. Uh, Jaguda, we love you. We always have and always will. And Jaguda, I hope you know that you have a special mention in the book. Yes, and there's a, um, there's, a, there's a beautiful mention in one of the short stories and we just wanted to say that to you with all our love and all our heart. <laughs> Please join. Give all your love to Jackie Shroff, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. So we weren't really sure if uh, Jaguda was coming because every time I invited him, he responded with a picture of a plant. So I don't know what that meant, but I'm so glad he's here. <laughs> And yes, he's in the book. He has a cameo. He's, uh, he has a cameo, and, um, uh, which is a really, really great cameo. And then Rakhi Savant has a small cameo as well. She does. Well, you just made her day, and we'll hear about it on Instagram. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all this, of course, so, you know, is Mrs. Funny Bones planning to make any kind of, besides your columns, um, you know, that you still, your recent column is a huge hit online. Um, addressing many poignant, relevant topics. Not really. It was the fallout from your show. That was my last column. Because you call people on your show, then you trap them, then they say silly things, and they get into trouble, and then I write a column defending them. It's an old thing. We've done this many times. Yes, yes. It's all you. you you've done it every day. You? You, you save the... You'll cure cancer one day. I know. Almost. <laughs> I know you will. I know you will. I absolutely know you will. You know, you know, I had a train of thought before I sat on this chair and it's obviously been derailed uh, because of all the absolute pearls of wisdom that are coming my way. Death is a recurring, um, um, is a recurring theme in your shorts and your, you know, in, in the book. Um, death is something that, you know, we all have our own feelings about. Some fear it, some want it, uh, some, some are completely traumatized by the idea of losing loved ones. Um, they fear the loneliness post that. You've dealt with death in the most intriguing aspect. Is there something about death that fascinates you? I think it depends on every stage. I'm at a stage where, like a lot of people, our grandparents are gone. One parent is gone and then you start looking at it and you know that the time that's left ahead is not the same as what you've already crossed. So that kind of stays in your head and human beings have this delusion and that's the only way we survive, that we pretend we're immortal and the people we love are immortal. But when you really face that fact, what do you do? So I have a story in this about a woman who's 86 yes. who wants uh, to avail of euthanasia and, and how that entire sort of psychological journey yes. uh, takes place. And what's interesting in that story is that she f sends it to a, a judge and she tells him also to do the same thing. Yeah, she sends it to the Chief Justice actually. Yes. She was going to send it to the uh, President of India but then we have a lawyer friend sitting there who said, can you not write this and just make it Chief Justice? So I said, okay, fine. There he is at the back. Yeah, but you know, you already said what your lawyer told you not to say. But he's not my lawyer, <laughs> but yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't know, one of us is going to get into trouble at the end of this interaction. I hope it's not me, because it invariably is. No, so this book, um, today where it stands um, and where you're at, um, you've written this book, you live between two cities, um, you've educated yourself at this age and stage, um, you're writing your columns, and now what is the next plan? Now... Um I don't know actually, I've been, so I say these things and then sometimes they happen. I've been saying I want to study, I used to take Arav to this education counselor and I used to keep saying I want to go back to university, I want to go back to university. And he teased me and he said this is the time to look after your children. And I said listen that's really misogynistic, I'm going to put it in a column and then he started laughing. But he did help me get back to university. So I say things and then you know they kind of happen. And I think for the last two, three years I've been saying I want to become health minister. 
So I, I don't know whether that's going to happen, but I'm just going to keep repeating it again and again. And then maybe, who knows, it may just happen. Well, you manifest it, it'll happen. It'll happen. All right, that was lovely. I have some quick questions to ask you, which you can give very quick answers to. Hopefully, they will be. Um, uh, what do you prefer, Twinkle? Best-selling author or critically acclaimed one with no sales at all? I want to be Karan Johar with my own show, Coffee with Karan, where I make so much money and I also go to people's birthday parties and they give me a craw for that. I want to be that person. Are you speaking to my agency by any chance? <laughs> and are they divulging details that they're not supposed to? And what do you mean? I've been invited to various events to play rapid fire, um, even at a children's party, not just over <laughs> there. And, and I have accepted that invite. I think that's really good. My husband says that he'll go for anything as well, including mundans. Yeah. And yeah so no, we think, why. your husband and I think alike. I've been to a child's birthday party, but the child was, lo and behold, two years old. So, there was not much of an interaction I really could have had, but I was there. Uh, but thematically in your book, and I'm only saying it because of that, this is not a dark question. Death by euthanasia when you think like you're done, or by natural forces? I think... Um, well, it depends. It depends upon my situation. But yeah, everybody wants to kind of die in their sleep, but it doesn't happen. So then maybe euthanasia when it's all done with and I know that I don't have much ahead. All right. And lastly, an eccentric family. You write many characters who are eccentric. Or a hum saath saath hai one. I have an eccentric family that is hum saath saath hai. They never leave me and they're completely batty. <laughs> I mean, my mother is sitting there and the things that she says to me, I've given her my book and she says, no, I've not read it yet because it's in my temple. I think she's waiting for Shivji to read it and give a review and then she'll read it. I'm not quite sure. I do, she may not have read your last one either. Oh, she did. She did and then she underlined passages and then tried to explain to me what I had originally written. All right. Well, mothers are allowed to do anything. And then I was going to ask you for some rating before I close this chapter with you. Uh, Rate yourself on the following, as out of 10, as a mother. No, I'm not answering these questions. I'm not on coffee with Karan. I'm not answering these questions. Why? Well, I don't want to. I'm not on coffee with Karan. But you have to give me an answer. You called me. Now you do what I want you to do. <laughs> okay, I will... You rate. Who do you think is the hottest person? You love these questions. Siddharth Malhotra, Vicky Kaushal, Shah Rukh Khan. Ranveer Singh, these are your favorite questions. All of us are narcissistic. I am the hottest person. I now. agree Answer with you. In, in my now, world, you are the hottest. Yeah, so then I'm glad we agree on that. So tell me, rate, rank yourself from 1 to 10. How are you as a mother, according to you? Huh, I'm, I'm, I rate myself as a person. I'm 6 and I'm trying to become 7 and that's it. That's good enough. It's a, so I'm you cover all bases left. in that, as yeah, a daughter, I'm, as a wife, yeah. as an author. You're I'm a six. six. Or, I'm you know. a six. I'm happy being six. Well, consistency is also exactly. a strength to have. Yeah. It was an absolute. Okay, can you now call the readers? Please? It was an really absolute. Let me complete. It was an absolute, <laughs> absolute displeasure being in conversation okay. with you. Uh, I hope never to repeat this mistake again. You have to come again. Uh, I also hope your book really sells like hot cakes, which I know it's going to. I hope it's going to top every chart. I say this with my love, with lots of love from the bottom of my heart. I ain't interviewing you again after this. You have to come back. Unless you pop it, then we have that picture. But don't, yeah. Just wait now, please. Never know. Yeah. So I'm going to tell my mother. Can you you call talk the to readers, I will, I will. I'm good. Okay. My friend. Thank you. Would you like to leave? But before that, yes, yes. Give me a hug. All right. I was going to say give it up, but don't. Uh, uh, <laughs> she doesn't need to hear any more applause.